biotech sector finished 2019 red hot. We could see more big moves uh, this week because the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference kicks off today. It's considered the sector's uh, investing event of the year, bringing together industry leaders, innovative startups that hope to shape the future of medicine. Meg Terrell is at the event in San Francisco, joins us with a special guest. Hey, Meg. Hey, Joe. Well, that special guest is Alexis Borisi, the founder and CEO of a brand new company called EQRX, which has just raised $200 million to start a new company whose sole goal is to undercut the price of branded drugs. Now, you're talking about prices a third to a fifth of what current medicines are. Why has nobody done this yet, and how is this possible? So this is a golden age of innovation for uh, new medicines for patients. So why is it? at this moment in time when we have such powerful new medicines that people, when they have the ill fortune of needing one of those, that they worry, can they afford it? Will they even be able to have access to it at all? Do they need to skip doses? So at EQRX, we think the time is right now to be able to bring equally as good or better new medicines to patients and society, but at this radically more affordable price. Well, your industry, the industry where you've worked your entire career, founded more than a dozen companies has argued that it's not the drug industry's fault, it's the middlemen who keep these lower priced medicines from getting to patients and who cause the access issues. Are you saying that that's not the case? If you come out with lower priced drugs, it will actually help people be able to afford their medicines. So I think there are genuine issues uh, with the, the middlemen, as you say. However, let's step back and look at the broader context. The prices that we as an industry charge for our drugs have gone up ever more, more than an order of magnitude above the rate of inflation over the generation that I've been in this business. At the same time, technology, what we can do in both creating medicines, proving that they work, and delivering them, getting them to patients through the healthcare system, there are things we can do today that are radically different than what we could do before. And so at EQRX, we are trying to rethink, reimagine, re-engineer the whole way that we make medicines from creating them, proving they work, and getting them to patients. Why would your company be able to use these technologies in a way to lower the price of medicines where a competitor of Pfizer, a Merck, a Bristol wouldn't and just get more profitable? So when you look at disruptors in other industries, it's often been really hard for the legacy incumbents to be able to make these types of changes. It's not one technology. There's lots of different technologies in all sorts of different parts of how you create the drugs, prove they work, and bring them to patients. So if you will, we are literally re-engineering that entire process. And again, like disruptors in other industries, oftentimes what you need is a purpose-built new company data science is native to be able to make this happen. So who here at this JP Morgan conference, where literally everybody from the industry is present, who here should be worried? Who are you going after? Well, our, our ambitions are large. So we want to have our first drug on a market within five years. We'd like to have 10 on the market within 10 years. By 15 years, we want to have literally dozens and dozens of these great innovative new medicines at a radically more affordable price on the market. So if, our, if that could be at some point a third of uh, new drugs, that's something that then we think we'd actually be beginning to bend uh, uh, the curve in the industry. How do you choose your first targets? That is a really important question. So we haven't disclosed exactly which targets yet, but we're focused in the areas of oncology and immunoinflammation. We're looking for the areas where you have a very heavy burden to society and where you have that really high patient need. So when you think about Me Too drugs, I mean, this is essentially what you're creating here. You're not creating generics. You're not creating biosimilar drugs. You're going to have your own patent protection. I mean, other companies do this, but the pricing structure, they don't typically compete on price the way you're talking about. I mean, sometimes we see bigger rebates, but why don't we see that now? It's a great question. Me Too's have been a standard part of the industry for a long time. But exactly as you said, nobody has ever competed on price on it. Now, I don't think you can do this one drug or two uh, uh, medicines at a time. You need to do this systematically at scale. And again, we see EQRX as a purpose-built disruptor to do this. If you're going to change the way the whole system works, and there are so many things that are deeply messed up about our healthcare system and how drugs get all the way to patients, you need to do this at massive scale, doing this literally on dozens and dozens of drugs. So that's what we're trying to do. If you do this on dozens of dozens of drugs, and going back to the Amazon comparison, which you've made before, and JetBlue as well, 
The industry argues it needs to charge these high prices to support innovation. If you undercut the price of all of these drugs, if you're talking about a third of the drugs in the system, are you killing innovation in the drug industry in the U.S.? So we think the opposite. We are trying to create the basis for sustainable in, uh, innovation in our industry for the long run. I think if people think that going forward the next 10 years that pricing in the pharmaceutical industry is going to look what it's looked like in the past 10 years, then I think that they've got another think coming. We're trying to create a company that has the efficient infrastructure, all the way from creating drugs, proving that they work, and bringing them to patients so that we can provide that innovation in a sustainable manner for society and for the patients. Well, we talked a little bit about your history founding companies, and one of those companies is Blueprint Medicines. Just got a new cancer drug approved last week, and the price tag's $32,000 a month. You're on the board of that company. Sure. Can you sustain these kinds of relationships while also founding and running a new company designed to undercut the price of new drugs? So I've often been said that I'm a man of uh, many hats. <laughs> uh, literally, you wear a Literally, lot of hats. I would have one on if not for the lights at the moment. <laughs> And uh, fundamentally, the most important hat of them all is about bringing breakthrough medicines to patients and trying to help people live healthy, healthy, happier, longer lives. It's what I've dedicated my uh, whole career to. I am so proud of the team at Blueprint, from with my co-founders when that was just a sketch in my notebook, to having that medicine that can make such an incredible difference for patients today. So deeply proud of that. I also recognize what we need to do going forward as an industry and what's possible today. And the spread between where prices have gotten and what technology makes possible to be able to be done today. And that spread is an enormous opportunity. At EQRX, what we're trying to do in many ways is very simple, but very difficult uh, to go and execute, is we say we see that opportunity and we want to re-engineer the system to bring these medicines to patients.